An uh, oscillator is an active RF device that converts DC into an RF signal. And this RF signal typically has a particular frequency, particular frequency. So it is essentially converting a DC signal into a sinusoidal signal. And a good oscillator will provide stable oscillation. For example, a carrier frequency FC or any particular frequency F0. It is supposed to provide a stable uh, frequency output. And how this uh, oscillator is essentially going to be is uh, how it's able to generate a sinusoidal signal is by using the concept of positive feedback applying to an amplifier. For example, if you have, uh, uh, let's say, an amplifier here uh, represented by the system response HA, if you take a part of the output and feed that back, to the input and the transfer function of the feedback system let that be hf then the output in terms of the input can be given as the total uh, uh, system response for the closed loop for the closed loop uh, why we call this as a closed loop because the output is fed back and typically this fed back output is supposed to be in negative feedback then the output is stable but in an oscillator, purposefully, this feedback is positive. Uh, if, if the feedback is negative, negative feedback is stable. Leads to stable uh, response. We will see what that is in a moment. But if you have positive feedback, then uh, the output is going to be unstable. Uh, output is going to be unstable. So uh, what is interesting here is we can easily write the system response as V out is going to be here. V in plus Vf, the whole thing multiplied by HA of omega. And Vf being what is fed back to the input is in fact a part of the output. So it is H of omega times V out uh, times HA of omega. So if you were to make V out the subject, we would see that V out is going to be V in H A of omega over one minus H A of omega and H F of omega. This particular term of H A of omega and H F of omega is what we call as the loop gain. Is what we call as the loop gain, the total gain that the signal that is fed back really faces it takes ha the amplifier gain and the feedback gain that is ha times hf that is fed back leading to instability in an oscillator now this feedback circuit in an oscillator can be uh, typically either a tank circuit or uh, essentially an uh, uh, lc resonant circuit or it can be even a crystal oscillator where typically this is some kind of a piezoelectric crystal which for a certain uh, when a certain electric field is applied the crystal oscillates uh, at a particular frequency and the, uh, uh, essentially an electrical signal of a certain frequency is going to be tapped out of it uh, when you apply a certain voltage across it so either an LC network or a crystal can be used in the feedback to realize an oscillator with a stable output frequency of FC. Now that we have seen this loop gain to be HAHF, how do we obtain a positive feedback? Uh, in particular, the condition for an oscillator to lead to sinusoidal input is when the loop gain is equal to 1 when the output is simply um, the total loop gain is going to be equal to one under this condition you can notice that this term in the denominator is going to be zero even when the input voltage is zero there will be a certain voltage output and this condition is in fact called as the barkhausen criterion and as long as this criterion is met the amplifier or the oscillator uh, which is made of this amplifier and this feedback circuit is going to be able to realize uh, output a particular frequency of a stable frequency of let's say the carrier frequency. Now if you take this uh, loop back, uh, loop gain, total loop gain, if the magnitude of that loop gain is less than 1, that means if this magnitude is less than 1, 
uh, the essentially the output is going to be damped. It's going to be essentially a damp sinusoid, eventually going to zero as t tends to infinity. If the magnitude of the total loop gain is going to be greater than one, then uh, ends up that the transistor output, uh, the uh, oscillator output is going to be so unstable that it becomes non-sinusoidal. It gets clipped off and it becomes non-sinusoidal in nature. So the ideal condition for the oscillator then to develop a sinusoidal voltage is when the total loop gain is going to be, the magnitude of the loop gain is going to be one. That's when sinusoidal signal uh, output is appearing over a sustained period of time. And to be noted, this output voltage, which is an RF signal of certain frequency Fc, where, may, where Fc is the carrier frequency, the power, the output RF power is essentially drawn from the DC circuit that biases the amplifier in the forward leg. Now, uh, depending on the feedback path, uh, there are different types of oscillators. Uh, for example, Hartley oscillator is one kind where uh, there are two uh, uh, the uh, inductors in the tank circuit, there's essentially a center tap inductor uh, in the tank circuit in the feedback path and one capacitor. Another possible configuration, po uh, common configuration is the call pit oscillator where you're having two capacitors and one inductor is making the uh, uh, tank circuit for the feedback path. And the resonant frequency for such an arrangement is going to be simply uh, 1 over 2 pi square root of LC where this capacitance CT is the total capacitance of this C1 and C2 in uh, series. So C1 and C2 in series, this whole capacitance is going to be CT. Now the call pit oscillator, the input and the output response, now this is going to be the H of F, this system is going to be the H of F. And if you notice, uh, without going into the details, the output and the input are going to be delayed by, are going to be essentially inverted, meaning it's going to be 180 degree out of phase, the output and the input for a call pit oscillator. In that sense, this oscillator can be used as the feedback path for an amplifier, uh, such as a common emitter amplifier, so that the amplifier itself has a the HA of omega, the angle of HA of omega is going to be 180 degrees and the feedback path of the call pits oscillator which is HF of omega the angle of HF of omega is going to be 180 degrees at the oscillator frequency of omega uh, maybe we call that omega C the carrier frequency at that particular frequency this 180 and 180 they add up and the total phase is going to be 360 degrees and the total phase is going to be equal to 360 degrees which is equal to zero phase, satisfying the Brockhausen criteria. Now, the configuration for that common emitter configuration is what you see here, the emitter here, the base here, the collector here, typically a transistor as an amplifier. And we know that the collector is going to be the output, the collector terminal is going to be the output, and part of the collector is fed back to the input base, uh, is fed back to the input phase, and this tank circuit essentially is HF of omega that we are looking at the feedback gain and that has additional 180 degrees to the inverting amplifier so making the sustained oscillations at the output at a particular frequency which is determined by C1, C2 and the L. 